Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Once again, my name is DJ right here at Krav Maga CDK. And originally, I was going to put this video out to send to all of my students, but I decided to send it out, um, you know, in general to, you know, the uh, Krav Maga population or whatever. Um, and because, you know, a lot of people want to test to that next level. So instead of me pulling all my students to the side one by one and having to announce in each class what I look for, you know, uh, I decided to just put a video out and send it to everybody so you would know what we look for or what I look for here at CDK in order to progress. In other words, test to the next level. Here at CDK, we go from level one all the way to level seven. That is from white belt to black belt. Uh, well, in Krav Maga, it's actually yellow belt to black belt. But I include white belt because I'm a traditional martial artist. And, you know, from we always start at white belt. All right, cool. At the end of the day, it's level one to level seven. So um, this may be a longer video. So what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to be the first to comment on my own video. And I'm going to try to put the um, the the time in which those levels uh, are in this video. So if you don't want to listen to the whole video, you can just click on the time to go to your level. So in other words, if you level three and you want to find out, you know, what it is that needs to be a level three, then you can just click to that. However, hope you listen to the whole video. That way you can get all the information except for just some of, some of them. All right, cool. Let's get it started. Um, so, and I got my notes here just in case, you know, I mess up or whatever. But anyway, starting from level one, what do I look for for someone to go from level one to level two? Okay. The first thing I look for to go from level one to level two is effective aggression, of, to be effectively aggressive, okay? Um, I think one of the mistakes a lot of Krav Maga practitioners and teachers make is that they tell their students and they teach their students to be aggressive, but they don't put the word effective in front of it. Look, you can be the most aggressive person in the, in, in, on the planet and can't fight your way through a paper bag. You just go into, you know, you just run into the fire aggressively and you're going to get burned. Okay, you need to be effectively aggressive aggressive okay um so i look for in other words you got to have some type of control okay? um uh and control is another thing that i look for in order to go to level two i can't send somebody that's flailing all over the place in level one put them in level two and they end up hitting somebody and hurting somebody and stuff like that so you got to have a level of control which is right under that effective aggression category. I got to know that you're going to be safe, all right, because safety and training, you know, you got to be safe when you train, okay? The next thing I look for is a general knowledge of the Krav Maga concepts and principles. Remember, Krav Maga is not a technical-based system. It's based on principles and concepts, and I want to make sure that my students have a general knowledge. They may not understand it like, you know, um, like they will later on in their Krav Maga career. But I want to make sure they have a general um, uh, knowledge of the Krav Maga concepts and principles, okay? Um, number three, the ability to perform your basic self-defense techniques under stress. Um, your, your, your plucks. Look. Uh -huh. It just brings me to a whole nother thing, and I'm not going to um, uh, harp on math. I'm going to put a note right here because there's a whole nother video I'm going to do. Um, you got to be able to know, you know, it's a curriculum. So people come to me from other schools, and they always say, hey, I'm level five, I'm level six. You know, I'm a gold, gold belt, green stripe at this Krav Maga school, and I don't want to start all over. Well, here's the thing, guys. Um, every school or organization has different curriculums, okay? I'm with Worldwide, you know, um, uh, so we have our curriculum. You know, you may have, be from another school and have another curriculum. So you have to know how to perform, um, the uh, ability to perform the basic self-defense self techniques of our particular curriculum, okay? So if you don't know what a pluck is, 
then you don't know our curriculum, all right? If, if you don't know certain things about what we do, you don't know our curriculum. If you're a student of mine, um, you need to be able to perform those basic techniques under stress. So for example, if I think that you're ready for a test or you think you're ready for a test, I may come up to you at any given time and say, hey, everybody sit down. Hey, Mike, go in the middle of the floor. I'm like, all right, close your eyes. When you get attacked, open your eyes. I have and students attacking them with your basic front, side, and rear chokes. If you freak out and you can't can't do it you're not ready to test okay um, that doesn't mean you can't fight that doesn't mean that just means you don't have a basic understanding um, or you're not able to perform our basic self-defense techniques everything that we have in our Krav Maga worldwide system um, uh, piggybacks off of the next level or the or the, or the previous level so you got to have a you got to be able to do that so that's what I look for I'm gonna put a video out too about people to come to other schools thinking they can continue their training at the level that they were that's just not true the curriculum changes all right uh, I don't want to get into that I don't make it a longer video I'm gonna put another video out about that soon all right conditioning you got to make sure you're in a good, a lot of people come to us from level one and they want to get in good shape. That's, um, people want to get in good shape. They want to learn self-defense. So we got to make sure you know how to, how, um, to defend yourself with the basic, uh, uh, concepts and, um, perform them under stress as far as our level one techniques. And we got to make sure we get you in great shape. Okay. So those are the four things for level one, effective aggression, general knowledge of the Krav Maga our concepts and principles, ability to perform our basic self-defense um, stuff, our chokes from the front, choke from the side, choke from the rear, static and with a push, headlocks, um, and you have to be in a uh, condition enough to pass the test. That's to get from level one to level two. All right, cool. So to get to level, I'm putting my times down here so I can let you know what times uh, it, it is at the end of this video. So the second is uh, to get from level two to level three. So you got to be effectively aggressive. We know that. Got to be effectively aggressive. You have to be able to perform all of the level one techniques under stress. I know you said, well, we just, we already passed the test and so we showed you. No. I know that you can do the basic um, self-defense techniques under stress. Okay. That's how you get to level two. In order to get from level two to level three, I want to know if you can do all of the level one techniques. You should not be in level three if you can't perform, perform all of the level one stuff. So the first thing I look at is your level one stuff. Okay, so you got to be effectively aggressive, aggressive, and be able to perform all of the level um, one techniques before I even start looking at the level two techniques. You have the ability. You have to perform at least eighty percent of the level two techniques um, under stress. It's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff in level two in our curriculum. A lot of stuff. So you need to perform at least eighty percent of them under stress. Conditioning, gotta be conditioned. Okay, now. Here's the um, fourth, I don't know if the fourth might be fifth. This is where I lose people. And, you know, I know a lot of instructors, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's what it is. Um, you, have to, you have to have a willingness to fight. In other words, you got to spar. If, you, if you're not willing to spar, I'm not taking you to the next level. Okay? Um, it is what it is, man. Look, you know, uh, it, you got to be willing to hit somebody and have, and, and, and you got to be willing to take a punch um, or a kick or whatever. You know, some people are not willing to do that. I don't force nobody to take fight class. I don't force nobody to spar, although we do spar sometimes in our regular level classes. I don't force it on you, but you're just not going to get to level three because the truth of the matter is, you know, it, if, if, if you ain't willing, if you don't have that willingness to uh, to fight, you know, um, then the only thing I can hope for is that if you're ever in a situation, you can end that fight quickly before it ends up being a fight. You know, uh, I mean, you, and I hope you get them in the groin, take out the knee, the throat, something like that, quickly before it ends up being a fight. Because if it ends up being a fight, it, it ends up being an all-out fight. You're gonna fold because you've never done it before. So I, so I won't put you in the level three if you don't have a willingness to fight. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to learn anything. 
for those who know, every three or four months, um, I add something to level one. Or not add a technique, but add a better way to technique or add, add something. It's always something you can learn. I'm telling my advanced students they need to come and do my level one classes in order for them to go to the next level, which we're going to get to. Um, so people can hang around in level one and level two for years and still keep learning. I got a couple of students that do that. No problem, you know, um, but in order for you to get to that next level, you got to have a willingness to um, to fight. In other words, you got to come to sparring class. All right. So uh, we'll be at. OK, so um, for the next level uh, to, to get out of level three and to get to level four, we already know you got to be effectively aggressive. You have to be able to perform all of the level one and the level two te techniques under stress. And you have to be good at all of the level three techniques. When I say good, look, you know me, I like quotes, okay? Average is the enemy of greatness. Y'all like that? Average is the enemy of greatness, okay? Um, most people are average, not a lot of people great, because people don't want to work hard to be, got to work hard to be great, okay? So you can't be average. You can't be average in your level one. You can't be average in your level two. You got to be, and look, I'm not even going to put, you know, um, great on you. I want you to be great, but I'm not even going to put that on you. You at least got to be good, you know? So when people look at you, if they never, they don't even know crime, but when they see you do level one stuff and they see you do level two stuff, they got to go, wow, that person's good. You know, they got to at least say that, you know, if they can't at least say, wow, I don't know nothing about crime, but that person's good. Okay. That's a key thing that I look for for somebody that's going from level three to level four, that kind of wow factor. If you're great, I'll probably put you in instructor training, which is a whole nother video. I'll put that down too. You know, I can talk about, you know, uh, what it takes to be a good instructor um, and stuff like that, you know, but I at least want you to be good. At least be good at all your level one and level two stuff, okay? Um, fight toughness, I look for. So, the last level, you just had had a willingness to you know to go to go in there and fight and spar. But I expect you to be a little tougher, you know. To go to level four, you gotta be um, a little. Uh, you gotta be a little tougher, you know. Um, and you know, which is uh, you know, look. When I do my instructor video, I talk about that. One of the things I look for in an instructor from the get go is I want to see what how they react when they get hit. I want to see if you have a, had that certain toughness, okay? Because if you can't, if you react and you just fold up, you shouldn't be an instructor, okay? If you just fold up, you also shouldn't be in level four, okay? If you, you got to have a certain toughness um, uh, about you to be a level four practitioner at Krav Maga, at least at Krav Maga CDK. That's what I think people mess up and it gets watered down. You get people level four, level five walking around and say, I'm a level four, level four, five person at Krav Maga and they punks, they punks. They couldn't. Then you, you tap them. They go, uh, They punks. And then other people and other arts see that, and they be like, "Well, that's what y'all offering." You know, that's what, no, uh-uh. You will not walk around with a level four title that I gave you and be a punk. You won't do it, okay? So you got to have um, some fight toughness. You will give, this is the test when I start bringing outside people in. You know, from three to four, I start making calls. Say, hey, look, I want you to come in and spar. I want them to spar people they don't know. Uh, you may be a, some of my Muay Thai friends, my boxing friends, some of my Krav Maga friends. I start bringing in different people on that test, you know, to, to, to really put that thing on you to, to see how tough you really are. All right. Because it's one thing when your students who you've been working with, you got to go against them. You're comfortable. But when you see these boys walk in the door and they got like their gear in their hand and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, OK. Yeah, it, it's on. And, you know, you have that fight toughness. So that's what I look for from level three to level four. Where we at? Mm. All right. Cool. So to get to level four to level five. Got a couple of students trying to get from level four to level five, all right? You already know all of the above, effective, aggressive. You have a, have a um, uh, you got to know the, the, the Krav Maga principles and concepts. You have to be able to perform all of the level one stuff, all the level two stuff, all the level three stuff um, uh, under stress. You have to have that uh, fight toughness, fight toughness. Um, you have to have that conditioning. Conditioning is very important, okay? Oh, 
and the sparring. Oh, we back at that again. So not only do you have to have a fight toughness, you got a hard spar. Mm-hmm. Look, I don't think it's wise to, um, especially when you're doing the kicking in the head or punching in the head, to come in and do hard sparring on the regular. I don't think that's wise. It's not good training. Um, I don't think it's wise to do hard sparring with people that is, you know, a whole lot bigger than you. You know, that's like, you know, when the women, I got a couple of my, uh, I got a lot of female, you know, um, uh, students and, and they tough and they, they're continuously telling the guys, hey, look, you know, I want you to, you know, I want you to hit me like you hit the, hit the, hit, you know, the guys. No, they don't. You know, I'm going to do a whole nother video on that too. No, they don't. You do not want them guys to hit you like they hit the female. Because, um, and that's, I do a whole nother video on that, but you got to train safely. So when I say hard spa, I mean that you should be able to stand in front of somebody that is around your size, your strength, and go for it, right? Not all the time, every now and then, but you got to be able to go for it because, look, look, man, you're talking about going to level five. That means you you street ready. you street ready, okay? So if you can't guff, with somebody your size, then how you going to go out here and guff with somebody in the street? It's just, you know, they're going to wipe the floor with you, okay? You got to be able to, you gotta be able to go, go hard, you know, at least to the body, at least to the body, man. You got you, you to gotta be, I remember, uh, I, I think I was taking my level four test as an instructor, um, and uh, I think it was Christian uh, that hit me. I think it was Christian. I, I can't remember, but I remember getting hit. And I remember I, I, I was sparring, and Kelly and Junior and AJ were standing right there, and he came up and hit me in my gut. Woo, man. I wanted to fall, I swear. My, my body said fall, but my heart said St keep standing, you know. So I, I kept standing, and um, uh, right after the round, I was like, man, that was a good shot. But I ain't go down. And matter of fact, I had two more rounds after that with two other black belts that they had brought in. You know, but it, hey, you know, it, and that was body shots, you know. So that's what we got to do. You got you to gotta be willing to, to, go, to go hard, all right. So uh, where we at? Okay, we, we, we moving right along, level five. How, what does it take to get out of level five? To get, to get out of level five, just say you got to do everything we just talked about. The biggest thing, um, uh, oh, let me digress. Sometimes I do this from four to five. Sometimes I do it from five to six. But to get from four to five, I want you to assist me in at least uh, six to eight level one classes. Each one, teach one. The reason why is because you really learn um, when you teach, okay, or at least help, okay. Um, if you want to be a part of the advanced students in this school, you gotta you gotta be able to give back to the community, even if you ain't trying to be an instructor. But to get from five to six, you have to go through at least a part of my instructor training, okay. You gotta make sure you are thorough. At least part of my instructor training you have to go through. You don't have to go through all the way to phase, but you have to go through my a part of my instructor training, which I get into with my students, you know, on the private side. We won't put that out there in public, but, you know, you got to go through part of my instructor training, you know. Um, you know, and you, you know, yeah. I, don't, I know y'all know we do instructor training. We'll be fighting lions and tigers and bears. So we just keep that to ourselves. But you got to go through my part of my instructor training. Okay, from five, from that's to get to level six. To get out of level six, that's pretty much the end of the road. Um, you're going into black belt prep. Okay, black belt prep. Once you get your brown belt coming out, you're coming into black belt prep. Now, black, now at that point, it's kind of it's somewhat out of my hands. Um, you have to be assessed by our chief instructor. This is how we do it at Krav Maga Worldwide, okay? And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow that doctrine because it, it, it seems like it's, it's, it's good, although we are still working on it because we got people all around the country that want to be black belts and we're trying to make sure. But we want to make sure that the product is not diluted. So as of right now, you know, you have to be assessed by our, command, our, our, our chief instructor, you know, uh, which is Kelly, Kelly Campbell. Um, and she has to pr approve you to test number one. And by the way, she's way more technically 
um, technical than I am. You know, she sees everything. You know, so you got to make sure you are really tight. She got, man, she sees everything, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, you got to get past that. And once she approves you to test, then either she's going to come to um, us at CDK or we'll go to her up in L.A. And then we're going to test and she's and, and I do get to sit in on the test and, and help grade you or whatever. So I as your instructor, I will be there testing, but she is going to be the one administering the test. All right. Oh, side note. You got to do everything with your other hand. So in other words, if you've been fighting with your left hand forward, you got to fight with your right hand forward. If you've been doing gun defense with your left, you got to do gun defense with your right. This is why, you know, what I'm going to start doing at CDK2 is somewhere probably around level three and four, I'm going to start getting you to switch your stance because you got to do it anyway. You know, it, it, when I went to my black belt, it really wasn't a big problem because, um, uh, in sports, karate fighting, at least training where I train, also, also ta taekwondo, we led with our lead, uh, with our strong side, which was my right side, because it, it's about getting the point. So we wanted our powerful side and our, 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 our fast side forward. So I was used to my right side, and then I used to box. I was used to my left side. So switching to me wasn't no big deal, but a lot of times it's really hard for a student who's only been fighting on one side to switch to the other side. So I don't think she should wait until you get to black belt prep to start that, okay? All right, cool. So this is what, a 21 minute video. I know most of you guys probably didn't watch the whole video, but you know, lately I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and that's probably the average time nowadays for a, um, a, for a YouTube video. I'll put this on YouTube and you know, uh, you can fast forward it to your level or you can listen to the whole video. Um, but that's what it takes in order to get through our whole Krav Maga curriculum. I got a whole bunch of notes here. I'm going to start my my, my my Opinion Mondays back. I'm going to talk about, you know, um, female sparring males. I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about um, what it takes to be an instructor. I'm going to talk, talk about why it's important to spar. You know, um, bring back those My Opinion Mondays. You know, I stopped putting them out because I didn't think nobody was watching them. But I, I think for those who want the information, it'll be there. For those who don't, then, you know, Oh, well, okay. All right, guys, so that's about it. I'm going to get up out of here. I got a class coming up. I got to get that food in me, you know, that health and wellness. You know, once again, my name is DJ, and peace. I'm out.